Hello, and welcome to Website Audit, how to audit a website to get results. I am Brian Harnish, a senior SEO analyst with Bruce Clay Incorporated, and I'm excited to get started. All right, the keyword and the STRP or the SERP. Okay, so the keyword is the beginning of all searches or rather the beginning of all searches begins with the keyword. And any credible site audit should at least first begin with a, some sort of analysis of the client keyword opportunities included with the audit. And as SEOs, I'm sure you'll agree that one of our primary responsibilities is uncovering new keyword opportunities. And these can put the site in a major position for growth in the future, especially after the audit is completed. So the other side of the coin here is that you must know your client's keyword phrases, right? It's one of the most important parts of achieving a growth SEO strategy. And it must begin at the keyword and the SERP level, right? So you're, you'll make sure that keywords match the SERP as including the user intent behind the SERP as well as other metrics like search volume and making sure that the traffic the keyword is getting will support that growth as well as the user intent behind that specific keyword phrase. All of these metrics combine to create a cohesive SEO strategy for growth that you will then be able to utilize for your client site moving forward. Then we want to talk about analyzing user intent and SERP behavior. You have to make sure to nail down the user intent behind the SERPs that your client is targeting. And this is what's going to help facilitate that growth. And in semantic search, the search engine attempts to understand the meaning behind the query rather than just the keywords, which is why just looking at the keyword phrase itself is not going to yield things like user intent and things where a user might be within the buying funnel and that kind of thing. So it's very important to make sure that you take into consideration keywords, user intent, and SERP behavior. All of these are constantly changing. You have to keep up with all of the ins and outs of these specific items in order to make sure that you can alter and make changes to your client's keyword strategy properly. And this is where priming your client's site for growth. And really any site audit should prime your client's site for a position of growth afterward. This does not always mean search volume with a particular keyword phrase. And here's, I will uh, give you an example of this. So say you have a keyword phrase that has zero search volume, but has some kind of cost per click and you have, uh, and you have a pretty decent amount of competitors in the actual search result, right? These are all additional factors that you, can, that you must consider when you're looking at these specific keyword phrases so that you can achieve the desired growth for your client. You don't want to have a situation where you go for a high volume keyword phrase and you can you can barely craft the top 10 in the search results because you're it's full of competitors that are vying for that specific keyword. No, it's uh, that's why this does not always mean search volume. And the, the major issue that I run into a lot of times is many SEOs will assume that what's currently on site are the best keywords that the client is using. Many times, the client is not going to know exactly what keywords they should be targeting because they haven't done the research. They may be using keywords from Joe Blow competitor or something that they're trying to overtake in the search results simply because it feeds their ego. This is not something that you should leave to chance. You always wanna make sure, even if the client tells you, oh, we did research, we did all this research, we love this, we don't need to do this anymore. No, 
always make sure to analyze these keywords appropriately and don't ever make sure, don't ever assume anything about anything that exists on site at this time because your audit is likely going to reveal something entirely different than what the client initially set out when they purchased the audit. So having another set of eyes is a critical endeavor that will likely yield significant results as a result of this. So always make sure that you do the analysis properly from the beginning and you'll be good to go. Crawling, indexing, and ranking. We have to make sure that we all know the difference between these terms. And I can't tell you how many times that I've seen an SEO use these terms interchangeably and it's like, eh, okay, yeah, we need to, we're gonna crawl, index, rank the site, okay? Not the same thing. Crawling is the default behavior of search engines. They just crawl the site and that's it, right? They're a crawler, they're a spider. They crawl and they have to crawl the site before they index it. They have to index it before they rank it. And this particular process is gonna happen in just in seconds. So this is why it's critical to understand the difference between crawling, indexing, and ranking, especially when you're trying to communicate communicate these terms to your client. And of course, um, as we all know, Google is known as, a, as an aside, Google is known for having major indexation issues from time to time. Look what happened earlier this month. Okay, we're gonna be diving deeper into some of the technical issues that are usually uncovered or that you might wanna take a look at that you might not have thought of before. First of all, robots.txt, crawling, crawling and indexing issues always begins with this file. This is one of the most important files on your client's site. You do not want to have an audit and not audit this file. So even if you find that the robots.txt file is A-OK, -okay, you can still find significant issues in this particular file. So here's one example. I can't tell you on how many audits that I have had where a client has accidentally de-indexed their entire site by simply using the line down here, user agent, then disallow with the forward slash. Forward slash means you're basically disallowing the entire site from the home directory to be crawled. You do not want to disallow the entire site. So just, uh, this is why knowing the robot.txt file is one of the most important things that you'll want to know as an SEO doing an audit. So <laughs> I, I cannot tell you how many audits that I've been through where uh, this was one of the major problems impacting the site. You must not underestimate the importance of this specific file. And there are other common issues that you can run into within robots.txt and it doesn't just stop there. So you can actually create lines that stop a site from being crawled. You can create things like crawl issues in Google that will show up later in Google Search Console, et cetera. So one such example is this one. So you, you have a line that says disallow slash folder name, which looks fairly normal, right? Then you have versus disallow folder name with a question mark and then an asterisk. That is that asterisk is a wild card. It will disallow everything in the path after the question mark. And that is very different than saying disallow folder name with the forward slash. Then you have uh, versus folder name and the <clears throat> and the asterisk asterisk after that. And this asterisk, of course, is a wild card. And what that wildcard does is it will ignore, it will cause Google and other search engine spiders to ignore everything after folder dash name. So you can see why it is so important to know your robots.txt file from front to back. And that is why the difference between appending a line and blocking a folder is huge. And you, this analysis should not be done in a careless manner. So it just really boggles my mind how simple 
typos and changes that I've uncovered in Google Analytics. I apologize. <clears throat> in robots.txt in the past, it's just mind boggling. HT access. If you don't know, eh, this is more of a server specific file, but it can actually apply to this can actually apply to Nginx servers, whatever. It's just a different way of doing things on Nginx than on Apache servers. But on Apache servers, you have a file called HT access. One wrong move in this file and you can cause irreparable issues. And especially coming from things like simple typos can cause havoc on your client site from crawling and indexing simply by having the wrong typo in HT access. There's one typo and you can cause things like URL rewrites to completely screw up your URLs and you can cause Google to index things that it shouldn't be indexing or crawling. It is such a mess to clean up after this. One misspelling of a simple command or priority order is wrong. In HT access, boom, you wiped out your site. So unless you know for a fact that your client's site is on Apache, which I hope that you do, then you must go through the HD access file just to make sure that there aren't any weird issues causing anything odd to happen somewhere on a particular section of your client's site. And of course, unless you know what you're doing, we highly recommend of not touching this file at any point whatsoever. Here's one example of an error that will cause significant issues if you have the priority wrong. And this is a redirect. So you have a redirect where the longer redirect must appear first before the shorter redirect. This is another example. This is an example of an error that can really that can cause issues if you're not careful. This is another one. This rewrite engine code is actually commonly used to rewrite everything that's not www.domainexample.com to the www URL. But if you set up an SSL certificate and you have a different domain that is used, such, such as a subdomain, and if you use that HT access code, but you don't ever update it, it will completely break the functionality of the SSL on whatever specific domain, what, subdomain, right? So you must mind your syntax, especially when you're working with HT access redirects. One wrong, wrong move and your site will go. Okay, then we're gonna be going into technical issues now. Technical issues can harm a site and cause harm to its performance in the search. And the many types of issues that can cause this is astounding. They include things like, you should, you might know this, well, for, you might know this already, page speed, code, rendering, things like that. If you're not 100% sure what you're doing in the code, you probably should not be doing the code. In case you didn't know, Google is planning on implementing Core Web Vitals as a ranking factor in 2021. So you need to make sure that you have this implemented on your site accurately and quickly. So let's, call, let's get started on page speed. One of the biggest issues with page speed are plugins causing tremendous stress on page load. And you need to make sure that the site you're auditing isn't using plugins that are causing such stress. Well, for example, one plugin that uh, such as Contact Form 7 um, is actually a better plugin to use for lead collection than Gravity Forms because of this reason. So we recently ran into an issue with this on a client site. And what happened was modifying the use of a plugin such as this actually shot up the client's Google PageSpeed Insight score as well as a combination of other fixes into the high 60s range, up from the low 30s. So something uh, like this can be huge. You might have plugins on the site that are not working well with each other. And in this case, this is a significant change that you should make to your sites just to make sure that these 
that you're not having significant page speed issues as a result of things like this. And this is what an audit is going to uncover. And you also want to make sure that the plugins don't conflict with one another, that they play nice. Then there's always an update, there may all, there's always an issue with certain plugins that for whatever reason they conflict and you have to change the plugin just to make sure that everything works well the first time forward. So just make sure that everything works well as far as plugins are concerned and that they don't cause tremendous stress on page load. This is one of the more common issues that we face on website audits. Yes, we know you haven't done two optimizing images yet. And however, the images can cause issues with page speed if you don't optimize them properly. Google or your user's machine are not the Hulk, okay? We don't want one meg images everywhere on your site. 100 meg images, I'm sorry, 100 one meg images, no way. And that is excessive and cruel. So <laughs> you do not want to have these large images choking your client's bandwidth. No way. So this is another area of image optimization that people are lazy in general, that you can make significant gains as an SEO. You can audit these in one of two ways. You can use Screaming Frog to identify images that are greater than 100 kilobytes. And you can use Google Analytics to find where page speed timings are lagging as a result of larger images. And prioritize your images on your, the optimization of your images through this analysis. So either way, this will be a great benefit to the site as a result. And you can make sure that you get the increase in performance that you're after. And also, don't forget to use lossless image compression. You can also use another one, another image format called WebP. That's Google's latest image format, so long as you don't have a large subset of users that are going to be ignored just by using that specific image format, then that's great. You'll, you can uh, switch to that, and Google will love you. Core Web Vitals. This is a set of new page speed metrics that were introduced by Google, really as a way of measuring user satisfaction from page speed. And there are so many sites we've run into in audits that have terrible Core Web Vital scores and so on and so forth, so forth you know? It's just really, uh, uh, really such a big thing that needs to be optimized on your client's site. And these core web vitals include things like the largest contentful paint or LCP, the first input display or FID, or the cumulative layout shift or CLS. And how do you analyze for core web vitals? You can do a simple analysis through Google PageSpeed Insights, and they will give you specific changes you can make to improve these core web vitals. But the question comes up, what changes should we make to the site to really take advantage of Google Core Web Vitals? Well, Google's gonna show you the lab data from their test that show what specific changes you need to make. And you can, from these lists, you can prioritize the changes in order to ensure the desired numbers for LCP, FID, and CLS are met. And this is gonna be the way that you move forward with specific changes from the PageSpeed Insights analysis. Yes, I know, Google makes recommendations. And are all of these recommendations realistic? No, not always, because it comes down to team priorities, team resources, and things that your company is going to have access to. It's not always possible to implement everything that Google is saying that you have to implement, but is it a good idea? Absolutely. This prioritization is truly dependent on those resources. And sometimes though you have to pick your battles, but if it comes down to being competitive in the search results, 
as opposed to not achieving what you need, then you'll want to pick your battles as needed and make sure that the changes that need to be made get made. And believe it or not, content issues can also affect SEO. When it comes to doing SEO, really it's just a necessary evil, but we still need to audit content to make sure that things are okay in that regard, right? Things like thin content, low quality content, any content that misses the mark in terms of user intent of the search, any content without proper keyword targeting and optimization, stuff like that. All of that can have a significant impact on the site once the audit is said is done. So as we discuss on boostclay.com, thin content is not about the amount of content. It's more about quality. This is important because word count is not the be all end all of content optimization. But in order to avoid thin content, you wanna make sure that your page is the most complete answer for the query and the search. And you, you will want to reward to create original content and you wanna write content with related terms and supporting terms and phrases and not just keywords. As Bruce is fond of saying, you cannot afford to ignore thin content on your site and expect to survive. There are types of thin content you wanna avoid. These include automatically generated content, things like thin affiliate pages, any content from other sources, for example, if you, for whatever reason you're scraping content or you have low quality guest blog posts, things like RSS feeds, whatever you don't necessarily that are being pulled from other sites and reposted to your blog, things like doorway pages, all of these are against Google's supports Google guidelines on thin content. And during your audit, as you find this kind of thin content on your client site, you're gonna to wanna to fix these content problems as a part of that. So this will likely involve things like removing pages or no indexing them, reducing the number of ads, things like adding at least a few sentences of original text and inserting relevant content from a database in small doses, revising title and meta tags to be unique and contain appropriate page keywords. You would not believe how many audits I go through where the on-page optimization is not dialed in and we need further keyword research and just to really dial this in and make sure that the page contains keywords. Adding original text and image alt attributes and caption, then of course, it may even come down to rewriting the page entirely. And it's really just astounding the time that I've come across the content problem in an audit. So really, please, work on all of these on your client site if it's on there significantly. So then we have link profile issues. And even on top of technical issues, content issues, keywords, any other issues you may uncover during a site audit, you are going to run into link profile issues. And I'm sorry, but anyway, they can be minor, for example, you can, uh, they, the client site might just not have the necessary links to remain competitive in the search results, or they can be major issues, such as if they have a major negative SEO attack and thousands upon thousands of links have been pointed to their site, and you see an immediate dip in a client's traffic overnight. That's huge. You must identify these types of issues as part of your audit because this is critical to making sure that you get your client site performing again, especially if they have suffered a dip to any one of these issues. Toxic links. So what are toxic links? These are any links that violate Google's webmaster guidelines. Their guidelines state that a link that falls under the following will violate them. Any links intended to manipulate page rank or site ranking in Google search results may be considered part of a link scheme and a violation of Google's webmaster guidelines. This includes any behavior that manipulates links to your site or outgoing links from your site. And these, this is an overview of links that violate Google's guidelines, as well as even more links that violate Google's guidelines. 
And these are specific links that you want to look out for. Things like torn links, gambling links, Viagra links, press releases with exact match anchor text, things like forum links, MSA, obvious PDN, web staff spam, embedded widget spam, article marketing spam, basically anything that looks like it could come from GSA search engine ranker, Xrubo, or Squarebox. Next, disavow toxic links in a disavow file. And of course, Google is on record of saying that if you're under penalty, they want to see you commit to a long-term link removal campaign. Ideally, ask web actors three times to remove the links. And their reasoning is that it should take you just as long to get out of a penalty as it took getting into it. So it's really like, like you get into a penalty and you're kind of paying the price for it, but that's what happens sometimes. So it's really just a, a matter of making sure that you disavow any toxic links and do what Google wants and you should be free after. Then how does it tie into results? Keywords, the higher search volume keywords that match the user intent that you're targeting that you can achieve will be the growth you're looking for. Higher quality content that's better than what was done before is gonna be the growth you're looking for. The better link that you achieve for your client that was, done, that was never done before that's gonna be the growth you're looking for. And finally, the better technical SEO that wasn't done before is gonna be the growth you're looking for. Combine all these together, and it's going to create the growth that your client is after. And thank you so much.